Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman. Over there, we got Christopher Drams. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Locker. Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. They will outfit you with all your hockey needs from players, skates, sticks, pads, pucks, goalie nets, uh, goalie pads, goalie gear, and fan gear. Fan gear. You can get that jersey. Well, not customized, but you can get a jersey like that customized there. My jersey. Yours. Oh. Yes. You can get a blank one of those and then get it customized. You can also get a Milwaukee Admiral jersey as well. Um, And you can get this hat. Um, and you can get referee gear. No icing chart, but a referee gear. Yep. Um, that and, joke never oh, gets old. No, 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 it don't. Referees are always going to be the butt end of a joke. Yep. Always rolling around looking like, um, yeah, a member of a certain family. Anyway, uh, the Nashville Predators w- took a trip to Columbus from that snowy winter wonderland that is Dallas. Wait, ain't that an oxymoron? A snowy winter wonderland, Dallas, Texas. <laughs> I, 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 I feel I feel bad for Texas though because that state is not equipped to handle snow or cold. So they go from dealing with hurricanes to now they're dealing with a blizzard. I feel bad for that state. I really do. The, let's see this. They can I mean, handle. Dan, don't you feel bad? I do feel bad, but they, if they can handle a, a hurricane, earthquakes, blizz, uh, uh, they can handle a blizzard. No, they can't because they don't got the snow removal equipment that everybody else seems to have. I know Wisconsin sent some down there. That's pretty funny. Yeah, that's not dealing with it. That's you borrowing from others because you don't got the equipment yourself. <laughs> you would think that they would have learned from that debacle uh, when they had Super Bowl 45 at Dallas. They had ice storms. You would think they would have started preparing for snow, but they didn't. Well, that's 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 on them. That's they. Oh, it's a once in a uh, once in a lifetime fluke. Nope. Not- <laughs> it's caught. Uh, never mind. Anyways, let's uh, talk hockey, uh, shall we? Stats. All right, uh, we got. Shots on goal were 32-22 for the Predators. Uh, face-off percentage, uh, 58% for the Preds. Uh, 42% for Columbus. Uh, Predators were 0 for 1 on the power play. No shocker. Blue Jackets, uh, they had no power play. 0 for 0. Uh, penalty minutes, Blue Jackets had two penalty minutes. Uh, Predators, 0, obviously. Uh, hits were 37-23 for uh, Columbus. Uh, block shots were 15-6 for Columbus. And giveaways were 8 for Columbus, 6 for the Predators. The Predators do give the puck away a lot. They just can't help themselves, apparently. Uh, yeah. Um, all right, so shots in the first period were 10 to 9 on uh, Nashville. Shots in the second period were 9 apiece. Uh, shots in the third period were 13 to 4 Nashville. Were, was that what you were waiting for me to cover? Um, No, I was just waiting for you to finish up. Oh, okay. All right, so before we get into this, there's a little stat that I want to talk about a little bit, okay? So the Predators, since Ryan Johansson's injury, are 1 and 5. Yeah. yeah. Mm. All right. So, beyond they only have they only have two victories this entire month. Um. Beyond that, shots on goal tonight. Phil Forsberg, goose egg, zero. So whatever spark you were trying to create, Heinz, basically killed all of Forsberg's momentum. The only thing, only spark on the whole team you had, you killed. Yeah, yeah. Forsberg, definitely the bright spot this year. And that, and that's unfortunate because, you know, you, you keep changing his line. Now, I understand chemistry amongst players. They should be good. But when you sit there go, okay, you're going to be on this line tonight and then that line the next night and then this line the next night, there's no consistency. And consistency is a key to winning. How do you expect a team to become consistent if you can't even keep your lines consistent? Uh- 
they're consistently screwing up and consistency can also lead to failure as we're know, seeing but, this season. But they're, they're consistently changing the lines and we're consistently losing. Like I said, consistent, consistently making bad decisions is leading to failure. I, I'm just reiterating the fact that you're pointing out the fact that they're screwing up and uh, they basically sabotaged uh, Forsberg. And Here's the thing. Forsberg, Grush, Duchesne, Granlin. That should be your top line. Yeah, Coonan, that's true. Coonan, Grimaldi, Arvidsson, second line. When who Olivier be, who comes should, back. Yeah, who should the third line be? When, for now, I would do Trennan, Cousins, and Halla on the third line. Fourth line, McCarran, Olivier, and probably... One of the probably one of the AHL guys. Um, at this point, I'm saying screw it and give Tomasino and R- R- Richie a shot. I'll call them up from the AHL. Let's give them a chance. Hey, here's an idea. Why don't you put Tolvin in out there? He was out there. Didn't do nothing. Oh, never mind. Oh, well, that's it. You put Tolvin in on that that third line, and then you move uh, Cousins to the fourth. You need a good checking line in this league, and we don't. And you keep just boom, 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 boom. okay. Let's pick a name out of here today. Who this is? Who you're on lines with? That's what it seems like. Why they out? Why they out hit us by fourteen? So they were clearly more physical. So I agree. They do need a checking line to get physical. They're not quite far, physical as, hockey. As far as I'm concerned. Fabro is an AHL defenseman who's not potential ready for the NHL yet. Benning looks like a man lost at sea half the time. And Yossi plays more like a forward than he does a defenseman. I mean, I'm going to call it as I see it with this team. And, and, and I know I'm not doing the recap like normal, but this has got to be said. This team needs some structure, and you can't have – a, I'm sorry, I can't give a good show for crap. I just can't do it. I can't give... Okay, Elvis Merlikens tonight? Hats off to you, dude, because Columbus... He, he had a good game in that tonight. Let's put it this way. Scoring. First period. First period, Cam Atkins with his seventh goal of the season with an assist from Line, his fourth, and Gavrikov, his fifth, at the 1943 mark. Second period, scoring, Max Dome with a third of the year with an assist from Jones, Seth Jones, somebody Nashville traded, his eighth, and Nash, his second. Eric Robinson scored an empty netter in the third, his third of the year with an assist from Gregoreco, his fourth, and... Was that Peak? Uh, yeah. Peak, I think it's count, pronounced uh, yeah. his second. Goaltenders tonight. Oh, uh, the Max Domi goal is at the 456 mark in the second. It was pretty uneventful, this game. All right, goaltenders. Sorrow stopped 19 to 21 with a .905 save percentage, but you got to give him some credit. One of the goals, he had a linesman screening him. Not that he has enough problems with his own teammates doing it. Let's have the linesmen do it. Yeah. Elvis Merlikin stopped 23 of, or sorry, 32 of 32. Hats off to you. Good night. You had a, a, a shutout. Well earned. Your team played like a team. Our guys played like a team lost at sea. Yeah. Uh, in, that line, in that linesman, I believe that happened during the Domi goal. They actually had to review it and see if the puck deflected off of the linesman. All right. So Garrett Rank and Justin St. Pierre were your referees. Uh, Ryan Galloway was the linesman who was in the way. You're on my crap list. I'll get to that in a second. And yeah. Jesse Marquise is the uh, other linesman. Head coach for Nashville is John Hines. Our head coach, uh, not for long. <laughs> uh, head coach for Columbus is John Tortorella. Uh, scratches for Nashville was Yakov Trennan. Scratch off, scratches for Columbus was um, Zach Warinski and Dean Kukin. 
Yeah, I don't know what else can be said about this team that we haven't already covered, man. It's just not good right now. It is just not good. Columbus played great as a team, and the Predators just couldn't get the job done. Oh, wait, I found a positive from tonight. We didn't take any penalties. Therefore, we didn't have to go on the penalty kill to lose by more. Wow. Wow. I love that. I love that passion, Dan. I love that passion. I, yeah, I, didn't, think, I didn't think you were going to go there, but you're right. Usually when we go on the penalty, uh, yeah. <sighs> Here's the thing. You Everything can't that coach, can go wrong goes wrong this year. You can't coach scoring. That's a given talent. But you can coach Keyword talent. This team, I don't think, has talent. They're untalented this year. It's not the talent that's missing. It's the camaraderie, the consistency. They had that last year with La Violette. The minute Hines came in, the lines were changing like this. And we started losing like crazy. If you can't show consistency, then I understand now why you were a failure in New Jersey, why you failed with the U.S. development program, why you got fired from both jobs, and I don't understand why Hines gave you the job unless you're his buddy. What, Poyle, you mean? Why Poyle gave him the job? Well, Hines gave himself the job. If you looked at the way this team's run, look, the Nashville ownership has no point in, in firing Poyle. I don't think Poyle's the problem. I think the problem is is, is is the coaching. And the coaching, the problem is, is there's not a guy in that locker room who respects him because every time we should try this. No. Thanks. But <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying you have to have a sense of stability. There's not even stability let alone consistency, you have to be stable. And there's there's no part of the stability of, okay, you're in the lineup tonight to create this mismatch. You're going to be out there when this line's out there because I know you can create a mismatch. They don't even have that form of communication and stability. I'm sitting there watching the game, and the guys are coming back on defense, and I see Hines going like this, going, because you want a line change. Therefore, potentially leaving your two defensemen on an island on a what five on two? You cannot get that far behind in games. You just can't. You can't show up in the first and second period and then go, hey, ramp it up, boys. Look, in the first period, first two periods, we're outscored 39 to 13. Yeah. In and the third period, we score more goals than basically there's only two teams that score more goals in the third period than us. Get that going in the first two periods and you'll be okay. Until you can do that, we're going to be sitting here going, I'm going to be yelling at you. Welcome back to Daniel calling you out. Yeah. You know, I don't think it's going to get any better because they play Columbus again on. Uh, Saturday. We'll be and, back tomorrow with Florida. And then they play Columbus again on the 27th and 28th, but on the 23rd and 25th, they get Detroit. Detroit already proved that they could beat Nashville, but then again, it's more like Nashville beating themselves at this point. That seems to be the thing. Like, here's the thing. You had consistency with with Forsberg, Granlin, and Duchesne. That line proved it was consistent. It was putting up points every night. Then you had consistency with the, what was that, the Johansson, uh, Arvidsson, and I think it was either Grimaldi or Trennan that they would flux in there. Yeah. All of that's gone now. None of those guys have played on the line since Johansson's injury. Forsberg has not played with Granlin or Duchesne since that injury. 
They keep trying to put Coonan as the top the top center, and he's he he. I'm sorry, I like Coonan. I think he can be a top center. He's not one right now, but he can be. I'd say if anything, he's like a third liner, second or third. I I say put him with the second line. This is this is all comes down to coaching and, st- and stability. There's no stability in that locker room. There's no stability in the front office. There's no stability anywhere in in this in the Predators organization right now because everyone is chomping at biting each other's heads off. And the it's players hard. are going and at the hard. coaches. The coaches and are going at the GM. The GM's going at the ownership. And it's hard for players to develop continuity on the ice if every game it's a different line pair. <laughs> Like and, and it takes and a, it takes a couple of games before players get a feel for their mind mates. It and, takes a couple of games, and you're giving them one. Maybe this is a sign that uh, Hines knows he's on the hot seat. That's why he's expecting instant results because he knows he's not going to be coached for long. You think that could be it? The fact that he knows he's on the hot seat, and he's I trying think- to, and he's trying for a quick fix to save his ass. I think I think it's at this point, firing currently, but yeah, that if, might if, be it. if I was the if I was the GM, I'd fire him and resign. Yeah, I've been wanting Poyo gone for like two years now because I wanted Poyo gone last year. It's just getting to a point. Look, Nashville had a good coach in Lovulet. Yeah, they let him walk. I hope. He wins a cup with Washington. You and I you, both, but well, I, have you know another, why? I have another reason for me wanting Washington to win a cup. What's your reason? You know why? Because he'll be the second coach to come that got fired by Nashville to do it. Ah, okay. With yeah. Washington. I, I just want Washington to win a cup because of Ovechkin. I want him to get to. But – You've heard enough of me going off about this, Lowe. Re- stay tuned for uh, Saturday's rant and rave and anger. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe to us on YouTube. By the way, we are three away from 50 on YouTube. Can we get three more subscribers to hit that goal of 50? We're growing on YouTube, so if you haven't already done so, Facebook people, you should check us out on YouTube. It would help us greatly, and we'll love you long time. Yeah, I got the end of that. Hey, I'm trying to get our YouTube channel to grow, dude. Come on, man. Support the team. You love us on Facebook. Love us on YouTube. Later, guys.